Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. On May 1st, 1989, Disney MGM Studios opened as Walt Disney World's third theme park in addition to being a working film studio. Here you could experience the magic of movie making and feel like you were part of the action. Today, Disney's Hollywood Studios is a shell of its former self as MGM Studios, and they've taken the park in a brand new direction. The theme is now where the movies come to life, as opposed to being a working film studio. Some obvious traces are left of this working studio theme, like the Indiana Jones stunt show and the Backlot Express restaurant. But a lot of the original park is gone, and today, only remnants of the past are left behind. So let's explore the history of the park during its time as Disney MGM Studios, as we count down the top 7 hidden secrets of extinct attractions at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Number 7 it's been almost 15 years since Disney MGM Studios became Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now 2008 may be the last time the MGM name was used, but today, there's still one object with the Disney MGM Studios branding. As you head up Hollywood Boulevard, on the left hand side you'll find a bronze statue known as the Cameraman. First off, I think there might be a couple hidden Mickeys on the camera. It's these two cluster of dots on the film compartment. What do you think? Hidden Mickeys? Comment below. Now just in front of the statue, you'll find the park's dedication plaque. And this is the very last remnant of the Disney MGM Studios logo. Here Michael Eisner's dedication truly captures the tone and energy of the original theme of the park. It says, The world you have entered was created by the Walt Disney Company and is dedicated to Hollywood. Not a place on the map, but a state of mind that exists wherever people dream and wonder and imagine. A place where illusion and reality are fused by technological magic. We welcome you to a Hollywood that never was and always will be. Reading this really makes you miss the magic of the original Disney MGM Studios, doesn't it? Now at one point, there was a turquoise Hollywood Studios frame around the plaque, but I love that now it's been restored back to its original form. A piece of the Disney MGM Studios name still lives on, so on your next visit to the park, check it out for yourself. Number 6 Toy Story Land sits on what used to be backstage facilities, which were also part of the area used for the backlot tour. It was where the Earful Tower sat. Our stands a lucky 13 stories tall, and it's capped off with a set of Mickey Mouse ears. Each of his ears weighs in at two and a half tons. Until the land was cleared for Toy Story Land in April of 2016, the Earful Tower was a very prominent icon of Hollywood Studios. It was even part of the city logo seen on the trash cans, which today has been removed. Well, if you look at this map, the Earful Tower sits in the area that's now Slinky Dog Dash, specifically right where the overhang of the load station ends. So right about here. Do you know what else is right about here? A hidden Mickey in the clouds of this drawing. Do you see it? And not to mention, there's a lookout tower in the army camp directly below it. It sort of resembles a water tower, doesn't it? I mean, I don't think it's a coincidence that the hidden Mickey was sitting in the clouds in this specific location. The Mickey silhouette of the Earful Tower used to sit in the clouds as the backdrop of Hollywood Studios for 27 years. With the location of this hidden Mickey and the tower, all signs point to it being a tribute to the lost icon of Hollywood Studios. Long live the Earful Tower! Number 5 As you exit Toy Story Land, if you look to your left, you'll see a sign on a building that says Roy O. Disney Production Center. Before Toy Story Land was built, this area behind the building was always a backstage cast member area of the park. Well, back when Disney MGM Studios was a functioning film studio, this building was actually used as production offices for the animation department. Yeah, if you didn't know, 
Disney had a separate animation department based in Florida, and guests were able to tour the animation building. Visitors will watch as artists draw the characters, see the drawings Xeroxed onto plastic cells, then watch as the cells are painted in the ink and paint department. The Florida division of Disney Animation would then go on to fully animate Mulan, Lilo and Stitch, and Brother Bear. For a short while in 2003, while Lights Motors Action was under construction, the Backlot Tour tram actually passed through this area. And that's the only time guests saw this building prior to Toy Story Land. In 2004, Disney closed the animation department in Florida, and the Roy O. Disney building was transformed into broadcast operations. Once the American Idol experience opened in February of 2009, the building was also used as an editing and post-production facility for the show. They would edit all the contestant intros and any other media shot on the day for the finale. This show was a big production. There's also a recording studio in the building that's been used to record vocals on Disney Parks projects across the world. It's really fun knowing this sign still exists and continues to pay tribute to the golden years of the working film studio. Number 4 This red, yellow, and black color scheme on the signs was synonymous with identifying the backlot production areas of the park. At one point, the style of sign was even used to mark the show buildings as sound stages. Disney California Adventure uses the same design in the backlot area of Hollywood Land. Well, as Hollywood Studios transitioned away from the working film studio over the last half a decade, all of the style of signage was removed, except in one place. If you head over to Animation Courtyard, you can find the Studio Store, still featuring this backlot design. This area in Animation Courtyard used to be the original entrance and exit to the Backlot Tour in the early 90s, so the store sold items inspired by new film releases. Well, when Hollywood Studios reopened in July of 2020, the studio store never reopened with the park, and today the windows are now covered. The store could come back, but it probably won't be long until the last little bit of this iconic signage is removed. For now, we can still enjoy this little remnant of the past and reminisce about the working film studio years of MGM Studios. And have you ever wondered why there's a big arch in the middle of the park? Well, originally, it was built to mimic the arch entrances of the major film studios in California. With Animation Courtyard being the original entrance and exit to the Backlot Tour and the Animation Tour, creating this grand entrance signified you were entering the production area of the park. Another lost remnant of the working studio days are a couple of fake security booths in the park. They were like the ones you'd pass by at the actual studios in California. Gate 1 used to be along the path towards ABC Commissary. You can see it way in the back down there. The original Gate 2 booth was in the middle of the path heading towards Star Tours. Then it got a makeover to the red backlot color scheme and was moved just in front of the Backlot Express restaurant. It would have been right here in this little corner that was made for the booth. Once you passed these security booths, it was symbolic that you were leaving the front lot and heading into the back lot. Now both booths were removed by 2012, but it was just another detail that added more authenticity to this whole Hollywood experience. Number 3 if you're rushing to get into Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, you may not even realize you're walking over some amazing Disney MGM Studios history. As you stand in the forecourt of the Chinese Theater, you'll find real celebrity foot and handprints in the pavement. Leading up to the park's grand opening in 1989, many celebrities were there to leave their mark in the cement. But the first celebrity to have their handprint ceremony in front of the public was Annette Funicello. On May 1st, 1989, the former Mickey Mouse Club star kicked off the park's Star Today program. Every week from Wednesday to Sunday, guests would have the chance to see one celebrity appear at the park. It began with a motorcade down Hollywood Boulevard to the Chinese Theater for the handprint ceremony. Looking at these old time guides, it's insinuated the ceremony happened every single day. So it appears each celebrity would have gotten five chances to get their hands dirty. Here in 1995, Lori Metcalf was leaving her mark. Perfect friends, ladies and gentlemen. Then the ceremony was followed by a Q&A at Theater of the Stars. If you have a question you'd like to ask Lori, join us in just a few minutes at Disney's Theater of the Stars, where you can ask the questions you've always wanted. 
Everyone has their favorite star. Now, if you try looking for Lori's handprints today, you will not find them. Many celebrities had handprint ceremonies, but their prints were never placed in the park. It appears the Chinese theater forecourt was saved for the A-list celebrities, so many of these castings were just stored backstage. Most of the ones on display today in front of the Chinese theater date prior to 1995. There are a few prints that are older, like Michael J. Fox in 1999. I think he's the most recent celebrity with handprints. And speaking of handprints, did you know there are also handprints in the forecourt of Theater of the Stars? There aren't as many as in front of the Chinese theater, but a lot of people don't even know they exist. Originally, Theater of the Stars was located just off Hollywood Boulevard, but with the expansion of Sunset Boulevard, the new theater opened in 1994. At this point, there were about 30 or so handprints backstage that weren't used at the Chinese theater. So Disney decided to place them here in the forecourt of Theater of the Stars. Based on the theater's name, it's a fitting place for them. Now, many of these celebrities are from TV, like Howie Mandel, Florence Henderson from The Brady Bunch, and Alex Trebek from Jeopardy. No new celebrities were ever added after the theater opened in 1994. And by about late 1995, the Start Today program quietly disappeared from the Times Guide. Until about the year 2000, there was still the occasional handprint ceremony, although it was more sporadic. All the members of NSYNC actually had a ceremony, but their prints were never seen. Who knows if any of these celebrity handprints still exist somewhere backstage. But if someone has a lead, comment below! Number 2 Star Tours is still a pretty popular ride at the park, but it wasn't ready for opening day in May of 1989. It actually didn't open until December of that year. Now, in the current incarnation as Star Tours The Adventures Continue, C-3PO pilots the Star Speeder, but he was only added during the attraction's update in 2011. Before C-3PO took over the pilot seat, the droid Rex was the Star Speeder pilot. He was an original character created specifically for the ride and was voiced by Paul Rubens, whose handprints can be found in the forecourt of the Chinese theater. Although Rex was removed in 2011, Imagineers placed one of the animatronics in the queue as a little tribute to his past life. He can be found in the droid customs area of the second room after you pass C-3PO. When you walk into the room, you can find him here on the left-hand side. Rex is marked as defective, and although he no longer moves, you can catch him light up and mutter some of his old dialogue from the original ride. Then when Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was built, Imagineers gave Rex a brand new life as the DJ in Oga's Cantina. Hello, folks. I'm DJ Rex. Here he's still voiced by Paul Rubens and still mutters some of the original Star Tours dialogue. Sorry, folks. I'm sure I'll do better next time. <laughs> it was my first time. And I'm still getting used to it. Sorry, folks. I'm sure I'll do better next time. It was my first flight and I'm still getting used to my programming. Hey! Hey! Number 1. Here on Grand Avenue, the buildings on the right are one of the only pieces left of the Streets of America. The Streets of America were a series of facades that created a really fun place to explore at the park. They lasted until April of 2016 when everything was demolished to make way for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Imagineers preserved these New York building facades on what's now Grand Avenue, but what if I told you there was still one other facade hidden somewhere in the park? Well, prior to Pixar Place closing in 2018 to become Unisaberg, this facade was found on the corner of the Great Movie Ride Show Building. The corner of the facade would have been facing the entrance to the Backlot Tour. This area is now backstage and not accessible by guests, but after all these years, that street facade is still in place. If you head to the back of Municiburg, look through the top of the gate and you can still see it peeking out behind the trees. You can also get a glimpse of the facade if you head to the second floor of the outdoor eating area at Pizza Rizzo. Pretty soon the trees will completely cover the view, but here you can still see the white molding on the building. They aren't the clearest views, but it's still fun to know these pieces of the back lot are still intact backstage. 
So, do you have any fond memories of the golden years of Disney's Hollywood slash MGM Studios? What was your favorite part of the park? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video.